Hello viewers, welcome to Doctor's channel. Today Dr. Shailesh Kumar Garge is with us. Hello Doctor. Hello, I am Dr. Shailesh Kumar Garge, Vascular Specialist. So today we will discuss about the peripheral arterial disease. Doctor, what is peripheral arterial disease? So peripheral RTL uh, are the ones uh, uh, which are away from the heart. So that's the reason we call it as peripheral. And the arterial are the one which supplies the blood to the different parts of the body, especially the upper limbs and the low, lower limbs. So any disease affecting these uh, vessels to go down, uh, small, uh, narrow or the blockage is called the peripheral arterial disease. Doctor, what are the causes for this? The main cause for the peripheral arterial disease is the deposition of calcium, deposition of fat in the, these blood vessels causing them to go uh, a narrow down uh, and blockage that is called atherosclerosis. So that is the main reason for the uh, peripheral artery disease. But there are other reasons like uh, vasculitis, uh, some uh, connective tissue diseases which also causes the blood vessels to go uh, smaller in size causing them uh, ultimately blockage. So the main reason is the atherosclerosis that deposition of calcium and fat uh, is the main reason for the peripheral arterial disease. Doctor, this condition can be dangerous? Yeah, because what will happen uh, in the early stage is slowly narrow down, but at one point if you don't uh, treat them uh, at the early stage, they can, they can result in the blockage and slowly the blood supply to that part of the body uh, goes down and the, the part of the body without the blood or nutrition will die and can uh, that will become infected and can spread to the uh, rest of the body. So the uh, treating at the right time is very important for the peripheral arterial disease. What are the symptoms doctor? So uh, as the blood supply goes down, the patient will have the, the need for the more blood like um, um, when he is walking there is requirement of the blood but because of the blockage the legs or foot may not be getting the adequate blood so this will cause pain. This way, uh, intermittent claudication uh, is, uh, is one when you are walking you will start getting pain but once you take rest you will feel better so you will walk for some more distance and then again you will start getting pain. So this is called intermittent claudication and slowly the limb as the disease progresses the limb will go uh, more colder and the, you won't be able to uh, uh, feel the sensations that is uh, sensory and motor loss and uh, uh, even a small wound or injury will not heal and uh, there will there will be formation of the wound or also large wound or also and ultimately at the end what we call it is a gangrene that is the dead part so it has to uh, be removed that is amputated so these are the progressive uh, symptoms according to the progression of the disease so what is the diagnostic methods are for this so most of the times we diagnose these patients clinically depending upon the age of the patient, the risk factors, whether the patient is having diabetes, hypertension and the symptoms what the patient is complaining. So the, uh, once we have the, uh, the complete history of the patient and the symptoms uh, we, and clinically examine that uh, once, once we see the, the pulses, especially in the lower leg or the upper, upper limb, uh, we will come to know that the blood flow is reduced. So we'll order order some certain specific uh, uh, investigations like Doppler test, CT angiogram or MR angiogram uh, or the conventional angiogram. So in this case, what we um, uh, want to get the information is uh, where is the blockage, what is the length of the blockage and how severe the blockage is. So depending upon this information, uh, we can plan the further uh, treatment as well. So uh, Doppler is the one which we uh, uh, order at the first rate but if you have any doubts or if the information is very uh, little inconclusive on the Doppler test we will go for the CTI angiogram we will give a more um, uh, objective uh, image of the patient's body and we can determine sometimes even because of the excess deposition of calcium we may have certain um, drawbacks in the CT angio also. So we can go for the catheter directed angiogram uh, where we inject the dye same like how we do the angiogram for the heart we do the angiogram for the legs or the upper limb and we will find out how the blood flow is there in the legs and those patients who have a problem with the contrast because because these patients are also uh, old age where the diabetes and hypertension where whose kidney functions are low where, where the uh, cre serum creatinine is high we can go for the MR angio also. So these are the different tests we, uh, we order depending upon what information we want and whether we are getting adequate information from each test. Doctor, how do you treat this condition? So peripheral arterial disease as I said very chronic uh, and very debilitating disease because of the slow and progressive disease and uh, the ultimately the patient's uh, uh, leg goes into a gangrene if you don't treat uh, them in the early stage. 
and uh, most of the times patients are given an option of amputation only that is cutting the leg that is the ultimate solution uh, they think but uh, that is uh, not like that so you can uh, if you come uh, in the early stages when they when there is mild narrowing and all we can uh, give a proper treatment medical management where we give uh, the blood thinners to um, to prevent the clotting of the blood and even to control the risk factors mainly the diabetes hypertension and uh, high lipidemia or high cholesterols and uh, whether there is any kidney problem and all and certain patients those who take uh, those who smoke or take tobacco they are also very high risk so we have to quit that immediately without uh, because smoking is one of the most highest carrying risk factor for the peripheral artery disease as severe as the diabetes and hypertension so depending upon the uh, disease grade severity uh, in the early stage we manage them conservatively we ask them change uh, to control the risk factors exercises and uh, change of lifestyle controlling the obesity all these are very important in the early stage but in the later stage uh, either we require the balloon angioplasty or the bypass and in case uh, sometimes the the part is diseased or dead then we, uh, we may have to amputate the leg as well doctor are there any possibility to avoid the amputation yeah uh, most of the times uh, we see the patient they they lose their limb but uh, amputation is not just the only solution in the, if they come in the early stage uh, like uh, with the, the disease has not gone to the uh, stage where the uh, the part has become completely dead uh, so we can do the save the salvage the limb by doing the opening the block vessel so the main reason for the the gangrene or the amputation is the dead tissue so before the leg goes into the dead we can restore the blood by opening the blood vessels same blood vessels which are blocked we can open them uh, to restore the blood to the uh, the leg or the upper limb and in some case if the blockage is short or, or the blockage in the proximal part we can do even the biopsy so this balloon angioplast and the bypass surgeries can save the limb of the person in, uh, from the amputation as well doctor how do you perform that so balloon angioplasty is performed uh, we will put a small needle into the groin and then we'll get into the uh, the blood tubes and we inject a dye to see the uh, blocked uh, vessel from where it is blocked what is the length and how is the blood so flow distally distal to the blockage and we get into the blocked vessels we'll pass a, a, a tiny wire through the blocked vessels and uh, we get across the blockage and we do uh, we'll put a, a balloon same similar to the how we do in the heart balloon angioplasty and uh, try to swell up the balloon and try to open the blockage and uh, restore the blood so there are different tech, um, uh, recent advances in the in the intervention endovascular interventions as well so now we have latest uh, treatment with the ba drug coated balloons where we give the drug uh, the drug uh, into the disease Uh, vessel so that the further uh, recanal further blockage won't happen uh, uh, immediately and the disease progress is hampered there only but uh, even if the blockage is not opening with the balloon we can put the stent to keep the the block vessel open and uh, now there are even uh, stents which are drug coated or med uh, medicated uh, stents so these um, uh, drug coated balloon and uh, dr medicated stents have revolutionized the endovascular interventions as well now with the latest uh, technology even the uh, the best uh, wires and the best catheters and the balloons and stents have come which are um, uh, opening the even the longest block and the most severe blocks and we are saving most of the uh, the patients from uh, losing their limbs doctor how anyone can prevent this see as i said it is a chronic disease and uh, mainly depends upon the risk factors like diabetes hypertension uh, hypercholesteremia sugar sedentary lifestyle obesity so you need first you need to control all these things you quit your smoking stop tobacco tobacco chewing uh, strict control of the uh, diabetes uh, strict control of the hypertension control your cholesterol regular exercise Uh, eat a healthy diet no um, yeah, and uh, meditation and yoga these all things will help uh, to stop the progression of disease at the same time the other medications to stop the progression of the deposition of uh, the calcium or the fat uh, and to keep the blood thin are the antiplatelets what we give the uh, and anti thrombotics to stop the forming the thrombus at the level of the blockage thank you doctor thank you i hope you found this video useful so don't forget to like share subscribe to our channel for more info visit our channel thanks for watching